What is up guys and today we've got iPad Pro in the house. Let's unbox it for the second time. Wait, no, actually the fourth time. Alright, so am I just supposed to act surprised to how shocking the box is? Here's my raw reaction when I unboxed it 11 days ago. Oh my god. But yeah guys, we got another iPad Pro right here after this old one right here that's used for voice recording right now and scripting. But not just any iPad Pros, it's a 12.9 inch iPad Pro with mini LED. If you guys haven't seen my last video, I mentioned that I tried out the 12.9 inch countless times at the Apple store and it's actually quite a nice size, not gonna lie. Like, you know, it's not that uncomfortable. Like, even me with small hands can hold it with one hand, although it kind of hurts a little bit, but okay, it actually doesn't hurt. It's actually quite nice. And plus there's mini LED and I get a better keyboard, so I went for it. But, uh, I had to return it. Not once. I'll explain why at the end of the video. Honestly, this whole shenanigan deserves its own video, so I'll definitely make one on that. But as you guys can tell, comparing the iPad in this unboxing to the iPad in the first unboxing, there is something extra at the bottom on both sides. Yep, I got 5G cellular this time. Why? I just think 5G cellular looks more badass compared to the Wi-Fi only models. I don't know, there's just something special about the cellular iPads, especially the ones with antenna lines instead of antenna bars. Actually, let me grab my OG iPad. Here it is. As you guys can tell, it has antenna bars. It's very scratched up and the screen's cracked. But as you guys can tell, it has a huge black plastic cutout. I actually didn't like it because it felt quite cheap. But as you guys can tell on the new iPad Pro, there's antenna lines on both the top and the bottom, and it wraps around into the corner, which I think looks much cooler instead of stopping near the camera. And also, since I live in the US, don't bring politics into this, I get a 5G millimeter with ultra wideband antenna right here. It's also unfortunately asymmetrical, so even though they changed the lines to be symmetrical this year, where there's like two, but the ultra wide bands are one right here and one right here, so it's asymmetrical again. I also wanted to get this cellular iPad because the fact there is two antenna bands on both sides means when it's during the summer, my hand grabbing it won't leave any sweat dirt marks on the sides. But actually when holding it, you can barely feel the antennas this year for some reason. But I like feeling it because it makes it more grippy. Alright, that's enough of me talking about my love story with plastic antenna lines. Let's quickly set it up with iOS 15 freshly installed. All right, we have the full setup here, and wow, this is such a flex. I mean, the floating iPad, not just on any Magic Keyboard, but the white one. And also, it's not just any floating iPad, it's the one with cellular 5G. Okay, I'll stop. And wow, this keyboard feels oddly satisfying. It has a nice stung to it.
It sounds kind of like an expensive Lou mechanical keyboard, not gonna lie. And we got our cheeky little Apple Pencil right here. Let me draw something. All right, I'm an artist now. It's gonna sell for millions of Ethereum on OpenSea as an NFT. Anyways, here's the most anticipated part. We're gonna check out the screen! Surprisingly, the screen is only 1.5 inches larger when watching a YouTube video compared to what many believe 1.9. That's not true because they got different aspect ratios. This uses a 4x3 while this uses a 10x7 because they stretched the screen out to fill the home button, but they didn't do it on this one to make it smaller. So yeah, watching videos on this is actually quite nice, since I don't have to shove my face to the display every time I want to use it. It literally felt so annoying on this, like I am actually legit worried about my eyes. I can still get a good experience while using it from like this far away. Also, check out the closing of this. So nice. But wow, this has huge black bars compared to this one, which actually surprisingly have tiny black bars. Because this uses a much slimmer 10x7 as I talked about, where this uses a 10x7 and a half. Or 4x3, if you want to simplify that. When watching a video on this one, it feels like watching a video on a 16x9 10.3 inch display. Whereas this one feels watching it like a... It feels kind of like watching it on an 11.8 inch 16x9 display. Which is actually not bad. This one is just a little bit small. I, I wish if it was a hair larger. Which is what we have going on here. Tiny amount of extra size actually puts this in its own league. And at first, during the setup process, I didn't really notice that much of a difference besides the black in the startup screen being much blacker. But in able to show off the display better on camera, we're gonna have to go to the closet. Ugh, that's something really weird. Let's go, guys. I mean, yeah, the blacks are just much blacker as you guys can see here. And their brightness is both maxed out. They look very similar. I mean, maybe this one's slightly more punchier while the LCD is more dull. Hello? I mean, yeah, the beach is like much brighter compared to this one. And also like the, the greens are just like, looks more realistic, more punchier, more alive compared to this one, just more dull. All right, now in a bright room, I can count how the difference with the YouTube light interface is like a lot more dimmer than the actual HDR video itself. All right, now let's test out blooming. As you guys can see, I have the AP Tech TV logo right there. And um, the Bloomy on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro isn't actually that bad. I mean, the camera is kind of over exaggerated, but it, it almost looks perfect. I mean, wow. But on the 11 inch, it's a mess right there. Like it's a disaster. I mean, on the 12.9 inch, like you can barely see the Bloomy. In fact, my eyes can like barely see it. It looks a lot better in person than it looks on camera. Here, let me try to simulate what my eye sees just a slight glow yeah that's what my eye sees but this is what the camera picks up well on the 11 inch it looks it actually looks a lot better on camera than it looks in person on the 11 inch it kind of looks like this to be honest on the 12 and 9 inch looks more like this if you pixel peep you can kind of see it but like you know it's not that bad all right now let's test out the speakers I'm really curious to see if the new speaker design is actually better or worse.
Alright, now before we test out the M1 chip, let's test out center stage first, before we forget. Wow, this is really cool, but I suggest you turn this feature off for your online class, because if you get bored and you're on your phone, you'll get caught in 4K. No, seriously, in 4K. Yo, just for the lows, let's FaceTime someone and get their reactions. Hey, Marcus. <laughs> I, was gonna, I was gonna answer the call on my MacBook, but the camera quality is horrendous down here, bro. Yeah. How's center stage looking? Dude, it's honestly sick, bro. <laughs> but is my portrait effect working? I got the beta on my phone. Let me get the, let me get the, oh, wait. Okay. Portrait and center stage at the same time. <laughs> the, 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 Oh, there you go. All right, so now let's test out the M1. We're gonna see how it compares to the A12Z, and just for the lows, we're gonna compare it to my $3,000 MacBook Pro 15 inch. With the six square Intel Core i7, the M1 has eight cores. Well, uh, only four of them are the fast ones. Let's run the benchmark. The M1 beating out the A12Z and also destroying the MacBook and not only the CPU and also the graphics. And here's a score on last year's A12Z. So it's almost as fast as the MacBook, but the MacBook is like 40% faster than last year's A12Z. It's just too sad that you can only watch Netflix on this thing. Well, you know what? You have Procreate, you have LumaFusion. Should I edit this video with LumaFusion on this iPad Pro? Eh, probably not because like it's too complicated. Plus, I have to go into another screen to just adjust the settings, as you can see right there. Whereas on the MacBook, everything is just on the top right. Right now, I don't have anything to show because I don't have nothing imported. But you will see all your options right here. And also, keyframing is kind of weird. You have to do the good old trick where you chop up the clip frame by frame and adjust the animations like that. It reminds me of the good old days when I'm still editing with iMovie. Alright, so yeah, this iPad is amazing. It's got a fancy Liquid Retina XD Armenia LED display. That was a mouthful. It's got great speakers, beating on the 13-inch Macro Pro supposedly. Center stage, you get the Magic Keyboard, Apple Pencil, and 5G if you need them. And M1, faster than my MacBook. We can't forget about that. That is actually humiliating to my Intel MacBook. Right now, it just feels so wrong to not edit videos on this because this is the faster one. I am forced to edit all my videos on my MacBook because it's got better software, which is just so easy to fix. And I'm not gonna bitch about iPad OS 15. I think it's great, like the widgets, especially on this larger one. And I'm not gonna complain about not getting Final Cut Pro either. Luma Fusion is great, like good enough for editing vlogs. Although I wouldn't have turned down Final Cut Pro. So why did I return it and got this and got this and finally got this? Well, it's because of faulty antenna bands, bad volume button, quality control, unwipable blessings from an unhappy Chinese stretch shop worker that's not paid enough. And finally, a scuff or unpolished paint. Some people might say I'm nitpicking, but when you're paying nearly $2,000 for a tablet, I think I deserve better and you deserve better too. That is an insane amount of money to spend on a tablet or hell, even a MacBook. Like it is actually nearly three times the price of this. You can get a full year of premium hub corn, but my point is still there. 
These little things distract me, and we paid top money to get real distractions. So I returned them and got this iPad that I unboxed in this video. Originally, I got the Wi Fi only because I was broke, but then I got the cellular because I want 5G and I want it to look like a newer iPad because if you didn't get cellular, then with none of the newly designed antenna bands, you can't really tell that this is the newest one. People be like, whoa, you got the 2020 iPad Pro? I'm like, no, dumbass. The reason is you'll get your $200 cash back when you like activate it or something. So yeah, it's basically free cellular. Who wouldn't want that? That is probably the number one reason why every single video I see about this iPad Pro, they all got cellular iPads. We even have some fallen soldiers who is always on the Wi-Fi team just like switching to cellular and I'm one of them too. And also, I thought maybe getting the cellular one, you won't have issues with the faulty antenna bands that's not installed flush. And that was correct. But instead, you got blood stains. Cool, AIDS. Did I mention I got free AirPods with it as well? Even though I already have AirPods Pros? That'll be in the next video, so stay tuned. I actually had to order like at least five iPad Pros. The story is too long and too good that it deserves its own video. So stay tuned for that as well. God, I bet Apple loves me in both ironic and ironic ways. I'll unbox the AirPods in the next video. But anyways guys, that'll be the whole video. So thank you guys for watching. Comment down below your thoughts about this iPad Pro and my experience with it. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time with the AirPods unboxing. Bye.